Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm going to be doing a spoiler free review of As Bright as Heaven by Susan Meisner. I won an ARC copy of this book in a Goodreads giveaway from Berkeley Books and it's being released on February 6th, 2018, which is probably the day that this review is going to go up, honestly. As Bright as Heaven is an adult historical fiction novel set in World War I during the Spanish flu epidemic. So the first half of this book starts in 1918, and then the second half of the book starts in 1925. This is kind of a family drama following the Bright family as they move to Philadelphia from their small town after the death of their baby boy, Henry. This family consists of the parents, Pauline and Thomas, and three daughters, Evelyn, Maggie, and Willa. And they're moving to Philadelphia to live with Uncle Fred, who is an undertaker. If you don't know, an undertaker is pretty much someone who does the embalming and everything for bodies before funerals. And he even has a section of his house that is dedicated to being like a funeral parlor. Uncle Fred doesn't have any children, so he doesn't have anybody to take over the business when he eventually passes away. So the plan now is that Thomas will take over and he'll run the business and it'll stay in the family. This book is following the Bright family in their experience living in Philadelphia during the time of this epidemic and how that relates to this family undertaking business particularly. And then also how it's influenced by World War I when everybody's having to be sent off to war. I'm gonna talk about the things that I liked and then disliked and tell you in the end my star rating, but ultimately this is going to be very heavy on the likes because I really enjoyed this book. So my favorite thing in As Bright as Heaven was the Bright family and seeing the family relationships. Every family member has their own dynamics and own personality and it's interesting to see how those mesh. And I particularly was interested in the sister relationships because each daughter was so distinct. Evelyn is this bright teenage girl who wants to grow up and be a doctor during a time when there are not very many women doctors. And she's very bookish but also compassionate. And actually I related to her a lot as a character. Then there's Maggie who I feel like is very independent and she wants to help out where she can. She's very invested in the family and making sure that things run well and she kind of helps her mom and Evelyn with that. And then there's Willa who is the youngest and I think that she is very much so that youngest child, almost stereotype a little bit. In ways she's the entertainer, she's focused on enjoying her life and her experiences to the fullest. So each girl progresses throughout the story and then also grows in their relationships with each other. Another thing that I really liked was this undertaking business because that kind of meant that there were a lot of death themes and that's something that I'm kind of interested in. I'm a school counseling graduate student so that kind of makes sense. <laughs> and seeing how all of the different family members came together to contribute in some way to this family undertaking business and then how that was influenced by this epidemic because obviously they're going to be in better business but, but how else are they going to be hit by this and the fact that there's constantly going to be death and disease within their home. Because of this with death and the business, death almost seems like a character who's constantly haunting them throughout the story. Not in like a creepy sort of way but there's almost a presence of death that's tangible in the story which really relates to some of the themes that I enjoyed. I think it could be said that a lot of the themes in this book are Christian-esque themes or faith-related themes, but I certainly wouldn't call it Christian fiction. There's a balance of themes in this book and that life has meaning in some way, but also that life is determined in large part by happenstance and that things just do what they're supposed to do. So there's a balancing act going on there. Like I said, there is the talk of death and what is death's function and death isn't necessarily cruel, it's just a part of life and how to accept that. And different characters respond to death in different ways throughout this novel. And then there's the war and how the war impacts people, those who went off to war, those who stayed at home, what different people were like when they came home from war. There's a little bit of an exploration of post-traumatic stress disorder and that was another thing that I just really enjoyed seeing because I know within the United States right now that untreated PTSD is a huge factor <laughs> with our military. So I was happy that that was addressed within this novel and that it wasn't something that was just completely ignored. And then the final thing that really resonated with me in this book was what is the meaning of home? Does home have to be a place that has a lot of particular memories attached to it? Or is home the people that you're with and this feeling of belonging? And then there's a quote that I think really summarizes these themes that I loved, which 
I read an ARC copy of this book so it, this quote could have been changed slightly in the finished edition. But that's that everyone has a past and everyone's past matters. Which is something that just makes so much sense to me as a person because I think that we're all greatly influenced by our past and our past is what determines in large part our worldview today and how we make meaning of our experiences. So suffice it to say, the themes in this book were really on point for me. There were a couple of things that I disliked in this story. For the most part, it's when we got into the second half of the book, I thought that a lot of the plot points were a little convenient. I understand that happenstance is a thing and that sometimes things just come together, but do they always tie in as easily as they tied in in this book? Not necessarily. And there were also times that I found this to be slightly dramatic, again mainly within the second part. There's a specific voice within the first part of the story that I think has a bit of a stabilizing effect that is lacking in the second part. But I suppose that also makes sense because in the second part, it's about six to seven years later, the girls are a bit older, so there's bound to be a bit more flair and drama. But as a reader who doesn't enjoy a ton of drama and enjoys more of the family dynamics, wasn't my favorite thing. However, I ultimately was still very happy with how it ended, and I gave it 4.5 stars. I would recommend this for anybody who is interested in the impact of disease and war, who enjoys seeing female relationships within family, and really to anybody who's ultimately interested in examining life and meaning and death, and how we can make meaning out of the lives that we have and what we've been given. Comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this book and if you're interested in reading it. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. And until next time, bye.